Welcome back to what will be a very action-packed and exciting episode of Rock Talk Live. I'm the host, Guy, and this is Charlie. I'm Charlie. This will be a lot of fun. So Charlie is Player of the Week, so we're super excited that we were able to nail him down for, for Rock Talk Live so he can spend a couple minutes here chatting with you guys. So, uh, Charlie, the floor is yours just to say hello to the people real quick, and then we'll get started. Hey, guys. I'm Chuck. Chuck Nasty. The POW. POW, Player of the Week. Oh, jeez. Not the prisoner of <laughs> war. Um, got lucky last week. Going to try and get lucky this week also on the baseball field, that is. <laughs> well, it was a good start a Good start uh, last night's game. So uh, you guys know how this works. We already got plenty of love coming in. So if you just want to give a shout-out to Chuck, tell him good job, keep going. Uh, encouragement, that's totally fine. Uh, we'll read some of your, your questions out loud, like Joey. Joey Klont says you're a beast. Uh, so that's that's a good thing. Hello from Texas. Uh, but if you have any questions too, we'll answer some of those as well. Uh, I will I will get things started with with a line of questioning. Tonight, Charlie is uh, it's Bark at the Park here at Coors Field, and uh, we're excited about that. There's going to be a lot of dogs here, and I happen to know that one of your best friends in the whole world is Little Coors Lemayhew, DJ yes. and Jordan Lemayhew's dog. Right. So just talk about Coors and what he means to you. <laughs> well, he he's kind of like my nephew. Um, we used to be super tight until he's he's grown up, and I feel like, you know, in dog years, that's like <laughs> one times seven. Like, they grow up so fast. Yeah. And now I feel like his dependence on me is growing less and less every dog year. Yeah. Um, you got to keep the, keep the relationship alive. Yeah, so I'm like the fun uncle that when he babysits, it's like anything goes. We can, like, wreck the house, hide the toys, <laughs> like, do all that kind of stuff. Or sometimes we'll just, like nap for a while but then it's like no rules but, but it's unconditional love with, with uncle charlie unconditional love not, I, not a curveball but the actual uncle charlie yeah all right so did you have any pets growing up any dogs any yes. goldfish beta dogs. fish you had dogs what kind of dogs labs labs all right so the follow-up question to that if you were a breed of dog what breed would you be what best describes your personality i would be like half wolf <laughs> half wiener dog <laughs> yeah. I is that, really is that even like possible? <laughs> a wiener dog wolf? Well, what would you call that? A oh, wolfer? Wolfer? Yeah, we'll take that. A wolfer. <laughs> That's a new breed. We'll, we'll accept make that. that happen. All right, we'll accept it. We'll, we'll, do some, uh, we'll do some research and see if one of those exists. If you know a uh, wolfer, uh, let us know, and maybe, maybe uh, we can introduce these two. Uh, so I'm going to ask another question. That's uh, local. It's in the news. It's the Olympics are going on right now. If you were if you're an Olympian and you could be that good at that level in any summer sport and winter sport, what would you want to be in the Olympics? Baseball uh, doesn't count. Baseball doesn't which count. Which will be back next Olympics. Um, you know, I really enjoy watching the gymnastics, but I don't want to have to wear those tight pants. <laughs> um, those guys are ridiculous. So I would say uh, it would be nice to be a really good golfer. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's an Olympic sport now. Yeah, it is. Um, oh, track and field. I would be a track and field guy. What? What specific? Four hundred, two hundred. The the short one. Okay. I'm gonna do the hurdles where you jump over the things. All right, that works. Yeah. Hurdles. How about the Olympics? You went to the X Games last year in the winter. Yes. What, winter uh, Olympics. Um, I don't want anything to do with going down the the hill too fast. And I feel like that's everything in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> Pretty much. So I would be a curler, <laughs> curling, flatland. Ice. That's a lot of strategy too. Yes, lots of strategy curling, games, lots of sweeping, <laughs> lots of vigorous yelling. Yeah. In other languages that I don't know what that. You what could learn saying. Russian and I German. I learn and Russian. Yes. It'll be good. All right, question here from Caitlin Craig that I liked. What what kinds of things do you like to do off the field? Uh, video games, TV. Ooh, honestly, just kind of zone out. What do, uh, what do you do when you're I not playing? I play a lot baseball? of Call of Duty uh, on my PlayStation. Uh, I like to watch Game of Thrones. I'm still catching up. I just now realized that this is a good show and I should be watching it. So I'm trying to catch up on my Game of Thrones. Uh, and then I do a lot of sleeping and eating also. And preparing. Sleeping and eating is preparing to play baseball. Yes. It's part of your job. That's uh, Honestly, at this point in the season, that might be the most important part of my job. I feel like uh, me playing better is all about just making my body feel good. Definitely, especially for a guy who plays every day, tough conditions. I mean, the heat and stuff in Texas and Philly. So you got got to prepare. That's a big part of it. You got to hydrate or die. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I saw a question here from uh, Michelle Jessica Jensen uh, that asked, 
do you hunt? And I'm actually going to spin this, this question forward. So in the off-season, you, you did some pretty cool stuff. You filmed some, uh, filmed some segments for a TV show that's actually airing now. So talk about that experience filming for the Most Wanted list on Sportsman mm -hmm. Channel and give a plug for the show and talk about that experience in general, what it was like. Okay. A good friend of mine, Christy Lee Cook, she's the host of a show called The Most Wanted List on the Sportsman's Channel. And so we filmed a show last off-season that's just now airing, and we got to do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I went on an elk hunt. Never done that before. Nice. Um, never actually uh, done any big game hunting outside of the southeast, like right where I grew up. Uh, so to be able to go to Idaho and see a lot of cool new places and hunt a completely different animal was a really awesome experience. And now it's airing, right? So it's on TV. Pl a plug for you guys, find the Sportsman Channel on your local listings, watch Charlie, watch Christy Lee Cook, yes. and, uh, and the Most Wanted list. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, so you kind of hunt, sort of, but you're a big fisherman. Like big fisherman, fish. yeah, off days. We also went fishing on the show. And, and I you flew. And I, I flew with the Blue Angels uh, in a fighter jet and passed out, which is also on TV, which is <laughs> probably more exciting than the hunting part. <laughs> hey, whatever works. This is completely unrelated to anything, but bungee jumping or skydiving, which one would you want to do? I think I'd rather skydive. Okay. I've gone bungee jumping, and it's terrifying. I've heard bungee jumping is actually more scary yeah. than skydiving, because in skydiving you have, like, extended period of time to like see the ground coming at you. Bungee jumping is like, it happens really fast. If something goes wrong, you probably won't even notice it because it's flat. Yeah, I went, I went bungee jumping in New Zealand and you can actually adjust the height so that you can like touch the ground if you want. Oh, and no. they're like very precise. So sure. who knows if some guy like miscalculates your weight or whatever. And that's, uh, yeah, it's not something I really want to do again. Kind of a bucket list kind of thing. So no, thanks. anyway, uh, moving on to another one kind of an outdoorsy question. You uh, you posted something on Instagram recently where there was a squirrel or groundhog or some sort of rodent attached to your foot or you befriended said rodent. So I, I need to know the, the backstory of that because it's kind of ridiculous and most people, I'm not a big fan of squirrels personally. But. <laughs> Sketchy characters. <That's, laughs> um, I was at Glacier National Park in Montana over the All-Star break and I hiked all the way up, drove to the top of the park. Then I hiked like another mile something up there, like through the snow, still snowing there, and made it to Hidden Lake, I think they call it, yeah. the Hidden Lake Overlook, and I was like super secluded, um, you know, like you're one with nature, and, except the squirrels there apparently see lots and lots of people. So they get aggressive. Like me, who <laughs> think that, oh, nobody's ever been here before. <laughs> and so they become extremely used to people feeding them, yeah. I think, and uh, so him, the little squirrel and I both really like uh, peanut butter cliff bars. Um, and, and you just, you became friends. So we became friends. You exchanged information. He actually, like, crawled up my him. leg and into my backpack <laughs> because I put the wrappers into the backpack. That's that's a bit invasive. It's like those pigeons. Pigeons get used to people and then they, like, squawk around everywhere. That's yeah, why yeah. we have the hawk here at Quartz Field, the rally hawk. Yeah. Tries to take care of those pigeons. <laughs> couple questions that I saw come in from the fans. Alex Espinosa wants to know what the biggest fish you've ever caught in Colorado is. Do you remember a specific, yes. specific catch? In Colorado, yep. I caught a 19-inch rainbow trout. 19 inches? That's like, that's pretty massive. Do you, so do you, do you throw that back or do you haul it and try to eat it? No, and... I uh, catch and release. Nice. That's good. Yeah. That's what you got to do. That's right. All right. Conserve. Okay. Uh, a serious-ish question here from Alec Vector. Uh, just looking forward to the rest of the season. Obviously, it's been sort of a tough stretch in the last week, coming off of an outstanding stretch. It's just the ebb and flow of how the season goes. There's, there's good times, bad times uh, at times. So just, just talk about going forward. We have 40-plus games left. What are you looking forward to uh, as we kind of make a run here and get things going in the last month or so of the season? Uh, so we've still got a lot of baseball games left. Um, I, I'm interested to see... You know how we finish playing. Uh, you know, are we gonna are we gonna be the team that continues to build on what we've been doing all year, which I think we will. Um, and you know, at times we pitched really well, hit really well, played good defense. Uh, but I think if we put it all together, we're gonna be super successful. 
win a lot of games between now and the end of the season. I agree. The pieces are there. You guys play hard to the final out every single game, regardless of conditions. So it's going to come together. Yeah, we'll get we'll get back on it and uh, start making a push for it. I really like this question. I'm going to scroll up here from uh, from Tabor Trabold, uh, and he asks, "What's the age limit for Dear Charlie letters?" <laughs> so is there an age limit? And just talk about how that got started, because that was Charlie's idea. And that's what's great about Charlie is he comes up with a lot of this stuff on his own and, and just kind of kind of makes everybody else do it. Um, so Julian and I, I guess we, we decided. I'm not, no, it's, you're not allowed to address me by name. I'm like the anonymous host. Uh, social media guy and I got together and we decided uh, uh, that we would do this really fun segment where uh, kids write letters to me and I answer the letters online. Uh, we're calling it Dear Charlie. Uh, kind of like a Dear Abby? Yeah. That's like Dear a, John. Some, <laughs> Dear know, John something. is a different kind of letter. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so like I open the letters and I, I don't read them until the camera's on. So it's like <laughs> this is my or, like original genuine reaction. Uh, answer the questions. A lot of times there's uh, you know punctuation marks or pictures or you know you, you know the real letters. Um, so it, it, it's fun. We do it a few times a month. Yeah, crank out five or, so. five or so of them. Yeah, them and, and uh, I don't know that we have an age limit on, on the Dear Charlie. <laughs> so if you're if you're a little older and you send a letter, you better have like a real crayon drawing <laughs> to like make me think that you're a kid. So, so there's your answer. There's no age limit, and maybe maybe he'll read it and do an adult teenager version. Who knows? Moving on, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask another one here. So the Bachelor was here last night with his with his fiance. Uh, part of the cool thing about that show, for better or worse, is that they go around to these exotic locations, and you know Ben Higgins gets to pick. I want to go to Thailand or whatever. So if you were if you were the Bachelor, where are some of the places that you would pick for these exotic vacation dates? Um, there was a lot of sighing as I was answering that, asking that question. I don't know, I'm not a big Bachelor guy. But. <laughs> I feel like a really cool place for a date would be uh, the go kart track. I'm like super good at go karts, kind of a big deal. Uh, but if I had to like pick some interesting places, I really want to go to Bali. Yeah. Bali. Yeah. Bali. 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 B A L I. Want to go there? Yeah. That's on the other side of the world. Um, I really want to go to Alaska. That's on my list of cool places to go. I don't want to go in the winter. It's cold. Um, oh, shoot. And I'm also really good at laser tag. So <laughs> that would be another cool place to go on a date. I think you're really restricting your, your potential pool here. If you're going Maybe like an Alaskan laser, <laughs> laser tag. tag. That's like two birds with one stone right there. All right. Hey, whatever works. Different strokes for different folks. I mean, we're not going to go to Thailand on elephants. We're just going to... Probably not going to South Dakota. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> Don't hate on South Dakota. Is we love where, South is Dakota. Is that where Mount Rushmore is? Yes, I think. This is the internet. They'll tell us if we're wrong. Yeah. Mount Rushmore is in South Dakota. Internet, tell us if we're wrong. Fishing. Jesse, help me out here. So much fishing there. I don't know. South Dakota, she's saying fishing in South Dakota. There's a lot of fishing. I could fish there. That would be good. Yes, Mount Rushmore. All, All right. right. Perfect. Got it. All right. So, Charlie, you are on the current cover of Rockies Magazine, this lovely, epic picture who was taken by our amazing photographer, Matt Dirksen. He didn't pose for this, so Matt just kind of stalked him. But you were also on the cover last year with this one. Show it up. And then the previous year with this one. So, the first question is, does it ever get weird kind of seeing your face plastered everywhere mm -hmm. on... T-shirts and boards and magazines and bobbleheads and um, when does that sort of become not that big of a deal? <laughs> I, the thing is, is that like so the first time I was on the magazine, they gave me this huge like four by six like printout of my face. This is my hand, by the way, that one. And uh, so I had this huge picture of my face, <laughs> and I took it home and like I have no like where am I going to put a giant picture of my face? And I realized that. Um, <laughs> Parents People like that, so. aren't really entertained <laughs> if you show up at your house and you have lots and lots of giant pictures of you in your face. So uh, I still think it's cool. I can't believe people want to want to read. Uh, I think they want to read. They do. Articles about they sell a lot of these things about me. But uh, I feel like pretty soon I'm going 
going to like run out of interesting stories and there's not going to be a lot more magazines. Well, well, so the progression of these, so this was 2014, 15, and 16. And it goes from like the goofy Charlie to the getting game ready suit Charlie to the intense game Charlie. And this is intentional. So that's who the Charlie is. So we get Charlie now at 1.30. It's almost 2 o'clock now. That's this guy. Yep. This is this guy who likes hanging out with you guys. As soon as he walks back into that clubhouse, he becomes this guy, studying film, preparing for the game, doing his hitting routine, Looking talking really hitters. Uh, and then once the game starts, it's the scary guy who smiles very seldom. So uh, the evolution of Charlie kind of explains his personality, and uh, that's the very profound thought for the day. Uh, and before, I want to go back to The Bachelor. So you, you were young, you were scoffing at The Bachelor talk. Yes. Uh, I'd like to let, just let you know, and I'll leave it here, that uh, David Dahl was very, very excited yeah, to catch that pitch excited. last night. So um, I don't know if you knew that, but I just wanted to let you know that the rookie was super into that and really pumped about it. And Trevor Story's a fan too. So all those young guys, man, it's, it's what the kids guys. are listening to these uh, days, you know, watching these days. I, I'm not. That's. I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but I just feel like that's not like the wholesome kind of television that you, that you want to see, like Game of Thrones or. <laughs> oh, that's wholesome. Getting <laughs> limbs lopped off and stuff. But yeah, that's way better. Uh, all right, I, we got to get Charlie going here, but I'm going to ask one more question. Uh, not really a question, but more of a, an experiment here. So will you take your hat off quickly? So I don't want to label anything here. Turn to the side. I don't want to put any labels on anything, but I noticed, Charlie, can I, so that your hair's pretty short on the sides. Yes. Pretty short on the top, but yes. in the back we have quite a bit of length. So yes. I just, just, I think you other people, like, what's, what's going on there? Not to put any labels, but, you know. I mean, it's kind of business in the there? front. Party in the back. It's a, uh, it's a mullet. That's what they call it. Uh, people so don't going, like to use that all, word. It's we're going all in with it. Yeah, it's a big, majestic American mullet. Um, it's not a Euro mullet. It's not a soccer haircut. It's not a faux anything. It's just a, a man mullet. <laughs> we're just going for it. Yeah, we're going. We're for calling it. a spade a spade here. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate the honesty and the candor. Uh, and so we're going to tie it up today. We, uh, we have to get you in there. It's a little hot out here. you got to start getting prepared for the game. But I wanted to give you some, some thank you presents today. Yeah. Uh, so we have these Rocky socks. Dress socks. That are, that are going to be given away at the game tonight, I think. Rock socks giveaway or yesterday. or Anyway, these socks are a giveaway, so buy some tickets and come out and watch the Rockies. And also, this was a giveaway over the weekend, but it's a free Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. So, don't say I never did anything for that's you guys. Chick-fil-A sandwich, that's a, that's a spot. We're not open on Sundays. Nope, of course not. So anyway, uh, just wanted to thank you guys. This was another fun episode of Rock Talk. Answer some of your questions. Got to hang out with National League Player of the Week, Charlie Blackman. One of my favorite people in the world. Cool dude, down to earth. Hang in there with us guys. We're excited to, to get back after it tonight. Charlie, any goodbye words for the people? Go Rock Show. <laughs> Perfect. Short and sweet. All right, we'll see you guys later. Thanks.